What's something that should be easier than it is? Yup, our bodies are designed through many animals evolutions to work best when we do all of the above, eat, drink, sleep, and exert energy. When you think about it, at the very beginning of humankind, in order to eat a person also had to be able to either run after food with a knife or spear in order to kill the meat and eat it or know which berries and nuts were okay to eat without poison. And when civilizations were at their very beginnings, you could also get by if you had people in your tribe who did those things. As long as you also could do something valuable like fight enemies or grow crops or even keep good records. Nowadays with just picking up all your food from a store, we have these ideas of sleep problems and also mental problems which probably wouldn't have even made front stage in our early evolution. Many, many lives are saved with modern technology. I think what is important to point out is consistent sleep and wake times are way more important than early bedtime or early waking time. Consistency and routine is key to having healthy and easy sleep. When you look up tips to get better sleep, all the lists mentioned going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. Having consistency helps you work with your circadian rhythm instead of against it. My kid wasn't able to fall asleep not being held until he was like five. Had to be rocked to sleep until then. When he was really little he'd wake up if you moved him at all. So when he was a baby I'd rock him to sleep and then have to just sit there for two hours plus. Could I lay him in the bed and lay beside him? No, not good enough. Had to be held. I feel you. I'm currently sitting in the dark with my four-month-old daughter on my arm so she can sleep. Y'all tried a sidecar bed? Our eldest was a micro preemie, and more, so when he came home I couldn't sleep without touching him to be sure he was breathing. We started co-sleeping with a bassinet so I could have my hand on his back. We ended up CO bedding with all four. They go to bed on their own but they will come in to out bed at night sometimes too. Two of them only for nightmares, eldest if he gets cold. More info PLS, we have an 18 mo old still nursing BC she's sick all the time, ENT apt coming up, and my 5 years old comes in every night. She's a sleep chaser so anytime I move, she scoots toward me until it's all four of us on less than half a king size bed. If I could get decent sleep, I would love it. But I'm so tired. And I think 18 mo is when I started night weaning. First two nights where I would sleep on my stomach, we would still nurse during the day and at bedtime but when the sun went to sleep so did milks. If you do that then may want to have the other parent be the one they sleep beside. Just wear a shirt because they root and latch in their sleep which is shocking for the non-lactating parent. <laughs> Staying asleep. Falling asleep isn't a problem. 10 p.m. comes and I can be out in a manner of minutes. Now staying asleep is another thing altogether. When you are awakened twice a night to pee that's bad enough. But then trying to fall back asleep is just too much sometimes. Get out of bed in the morning sometimes feeling like I never slept at all. Want to add that I cannot consume caffeine? So can't use that to be alert. Yup, I can fall asleep no problem. But I haven't had more than 4 hours of continuous sleep in over a year. And once I wake up, I very rarely can fall back to sleep. I'm basically living on about 4-5 hours of sleep a night, for a long time now. It's wearing me down. I've tried, melatonin, canvas, temazapam, trizodon. Ambien. So far nothing has helped me stay asleep. I actually have a meeting with a UCLA sleep specialist tomorrow morning to start to try to figure out what's going on. No kidding. I called my insurance company to see if the local hospital lab was covered. And they didn't know. They suggested I call the lab. And I'm thinking, you should know whether you are going to pay a bill from this hospital question mark or at least be able to look it up I kid you not 
I ended up with someone who isn't just blowing me off, and she actually called the lab, who rerouted her to registration to billing who were able to tell her the answer. What super major large insurance company doesn't have a database of who they cover and don't cover? The list is enormous and constantly changing. It's not just a list of labs, it's a list of labs, general practitioner doctors, hospitals, ERs, urgent cares, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, anesthesiologists, nurse anesthetists, urologists, surgeons, physical therapists, chiropractors, and psychologists, psychiatrists. Dot 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 pick a specialty, there's in there. It's literally thousands of providers. Contracts are constantly being signed or expired. Your best bet is always to call the provider and ask if they participate with X insurance. Source, have been a medical biller for over 20 years. Printers. Printer technology hasn't changed since the 1990s. Communication between a computer and a printer is still using drivers that haven't been modified in decades. You still get weird print queue problems. You still get instances where your computer can't find your printer. It shouldn't be this hard to just print a piece of paper. Edit. Spelling. I could almost buy my own printer for that. Consumer. Good. Good. The last printer didn't ask for enough permissions, and you wouldn't let it update its drivers. Now we can ask to see every computer program you own, get a copy of what you print, and snap pictures of your wife using your webcam, just to use her on the ink box. Of course, it's legal, right there in the EULA, page 478, chapter 15, section 4A. Paragraph 100 HP Still using drivers that haven't been modified in decades. The whole Windows driver model was changed between Windows 98 and Windows XP, then again between Windows XP and Windows 7. Those are the two updates I'm aware of, and I would not be surprised to find out that the model was updated for Windows 8 or 10. Methods of communicating with printers have also been expanded upon a great deal. USB, TCP IP, FTP, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and SD card are all options. Now, depending on your make and model. That said, none of that shit works as advertised, and God forbid you should run out of yellow ink if you need to scan something. I set up my printer years ago and it just works. I can print from my desktop PC, my laptop, even my phone. Now that I work from home I had to print something from my work laptop. Setup was just downloading the installer and running it. It found the printer on the network and did the rest. It's a laser printer, so there's no ink to dry out nozzles to clog. It just sits there and works every time I turn it on. I was at a doctor today. The path was almost ridiculous. Just the way my appointment was already weird. So today I have an appointment at 11.10 a.m. So I'm there at 10 a.m. and find a parking spot at 10.30 a.m. There is a queue outside the office. So I get in line at about 10.30 a.m. I finally get to the counter at 11.30 a.m. and then sit in the waiting room. Get into the examination room at around 11.40 a.m. and wait for the doc. Replacement doc turns up at 12.25 p.m. Because I was late to my appointment my doc left. Examination takes two minutes. I leave at 12.27 p.m. It's ridiculous. I waited about two hours for a two-minute talk with a doc, just to get a piece of paper so I can get a fucking appointment at the hospital, to then get another examination there for surgery. All just because they refuse to accept the paper I got from my regular doc already. This, especially today, Computers and software can auto-magically track payroll and report this and other tax-related data to IRS. And yet, somehow, 
we're having to either fill out ourselves or pay to have completed tax forms that generally get more complicated the more income and assets you have. It's almost as if the government wants us to fat finger our calculations and make a filing mistake so that they can charge tasty penalties or, worst case, put a lien on your property and own your home. I hear ya brother or sister, I've been there, I was with my ex for 7 years, she ended it by cheating on me. Twice, I was so hard in love I still would have taken her back, pretty messed up, but that's how I felt, truly I had to meet my now wife, and buy fully into our relationship, remind myself constantly that it didn't matter that she wasn't my ex, because my ex wasn't coming back. And once I stopped comparing her to my ex and just appreciating her for her, I fell madly in love with my wife and I stopped thinking about my ex. I'm so in love with my wife, she's the mother of my two beautiful children and I haven't thought of my ex in years other than the odd time she pops up on a friend's social media page or something. Time, and the right woman, heal all wounds. Seven years for me and it took me two solid years to get over her, and as I said above, the catalyst was meeting my now wife and even then I had to make a constant and conscious effort to remind myself that my new girlfriend was not my ex-girlfriend and to stop comparing them in my head constantly, especially physically and sexually. My ex was not conventionally hot but I found her so sexy and I was always looking for people who were physically similar. My wife is nothing like her. That was probably a good thing ultimately as it allowed me to separate the two and move on. Me and my girlfriend paid for a moving company and we basically just left the apartment spent the night at a suite on the 25th floor and then the next day just had all our stuff in our new apartment. We had saved for a long time for precisely this and dear god was it worth it. No stress whatsoever. We also had a cleaning company come and clean our old apartment. My brother's dog had cancer and my brother decided to let him live his best life. He didn't want him to do chemo or see him suffer. My bro had to go out of town and his pup's tumor swelled up like never before. I think because of the stress of seeing him leave. I watched him those three days and he looked awful and I kept praying that his dog wouldn't die while my brother was gone. My brother came back, and the tumor disappeared the swelling went down. His dog looked healthy as ever and my brother got his healthy pup back for a few days. Then his tummy turned red from internal bleeding and my brother put him down almost immediately. He looks back at those last pics of him looking healthy and he sometimes questions if he did it too soon. We all know he didn't, but that selfish part of you just wishes he could have had him one more day. But he did. His pup let him have the last few days with him looking so good. He didn't let my brother see him suffer and in return my brother didn't let him suffer either. I still miss the damn dog. I can't imagine how my brother feels. He was the sweetest dog I've ever met. I just recently got my current job. Apparently they went 100% remote during COVID yet chose to go 100% back to the physical office after. I have no clue why, and it pisses me off. My job has little hours of downtime most days. I could be doing something other than sitting there watching YouTube and browsing Reddit if I were allowed to work from home. Plus the 45-minute commute every morning sucks. There was an article like a week ago about some lady who's applied to 200 jobs and hasn't heard back from any of them despite them all allegedly being so desperate to find help. The actual process of applying is so fucking draining. I hate having to do like a Mayor's Briggs personality test for an hour just to apply to be a fucking cashier. Had one job application literally have a question that was like I believe politicians always tell the truth. Agree, somewhat agree, neutral, somewhat disagree, disagree. Like what the fuck does that question have to do with using a cash register? Fun fact, 
They do that so that the computer can automatically weed you out but if you have enough of the keywords they're looking for the actual HR person on the other end of the process has a nicely formatted resume to read. Make sure those text boxes contain the words of basically the entirety of the job posting to get your resume in front of human eyes. I never understood those questions either. But I learned that you should never answer in the middle, either go 1 or 5, never a 3 because apparently it means you have a mind of your own and aren't black and white in your thinking. Also, I hate the ones that ask something like true or false, I like to talk to new people at a party, or I love chatting with strangers on the bus. No. I don't do either of these and yet I'm incredibly good at customer service, it's just that in a work setting I'm able to deal with people but in my private life I would rather have a few close friends than a bunch of acquaintances that I can't depend on. It was really frustrating when I was going to school. A couple of our professors seems to just assume we all lived on campus and had unlimited free time to meet. The reality was at least half of us commuted from out of town, had full or part-time jobs, and trying to coordinate time and locations with an entire group was a real pain. We had two group projects in one stupid class I took for my last college quarter. The second group project consisted of three graduating senior and one junior. We literally did not have time for the project. We had to meet up in the fashion building so one of the group members could basically work on our group project and then go back to her fashion final project right afterwards. Printing labels. Why can't the computer find the printer? Now it found the printer but it still won't print for some reason. Okay I restarted the printer and now it'll print, but it pulled from drawer 1 instead of the manual feed. Okay it pulled from the manual feed now but it jammed the printer. Okay I unjammed the printer. But it pulled the paper slightly crooked and now the first letter of every label is cut off. Fuck it, that will have to do. I just lost an hour and I got other shit to do. Anything related to health insurance. My wife gave birth a few months ago, and she has great health insurance. But we're now receiving bill after bill indicating we owe tons of money, and the problem is that there are different kinds of coverages based on the reason for visit pre and post birth, and so she's on the phone literally every single day going over every single bill we're receiving. And even if her insurance does end up covering the bill, it's only after hours of being on the phone. This, if you don't have at least one partner in the relationship who can occasionally spend 14 hours a day calling doctors offices and insurance helplines to sort out mistakes some dipshit medical coder made in the fucking stupid billing system we have here in the US, you will absolutely pay more than you should be paying. There is no reason whatsoever that this shit has to keep happening. This can and does ruin people. Speaking to people in a direct and honest way that is tactful and polite. Polite people seem to think being honest and direct is rude. Brutally honest people, read, assholes, think that the only way not to be deceitful is to act like someone with no ability for empathy or functional human communication. People, it's really not that hard. Unsubscribing from things and cancelling services. For example, Gym memberships, mailed catalogs, internet services, credit cards, all of the ridiculous things that are adopting subscription-based sales models. Just about everything I can think of has a subscription-based model at this point from razors to cat food to frozen smoothies and all of them have flaming hoops you have to jump through to cancel service. Yup, a few years back. My laptop stopped working. It took me three weeks to muster the courage to walk over to the store to drop it off to get fixed. Three weeks. The store is four blocks away. 
The only way I was able to get myself to do it at all is because there was a new chocolate shop that opened up in the same mall and I promised myself I could stop in and get a treat after I might be a dog.